Here we go. Yeah. All right, man. We're back at it. Um, this is, for me, this is one of, uh, you know, all the questions have been awesome. They've been great. Yeah, it's um, been really good. Really good stuff. But, and, sorry, no buts. But is not the right word. Um, now we're going to get to a question that is, that I, that I like is well, one of my catchers ask it. Um, I didn't have him ask it. He, he, he brought this to me as a catcher. What do your catchers do to help you on the mound? Matt Probst asked that question. Great question too. Yeah. So the whole, the whole job I feel like as a catcher from my perspective is when, when things are going rough, you know, what, what makes me tick? How, what makes me, me and how how can he the catcher so it was you know jt ramuto how can him knowing me as a person him knowing me as a pitcher he would come up and approach me he would have things for me that i like that i like to say to myself when i'm doing bullpen work and i'm trying to adjust if i have a couple bad pitches he's catchers are really good at typically good at knowing what makes me get back to center get back to back on the right track it may be a simple phrase it may be hey man like just calm down take a couple breaths i'm just giving you a breather you're doing fine out here like there's nothing to worry about like you got this almost a comfort level thing so it could be a number it could be a number of different things but i think the biggest thing is the catcher knowing how each each pitcher kind of kind of clicks how he works what makes him him and how he can relay information to kind of keep him calm or keep him uh under control if, if things are going things are going wild so let me let me expand on that yeah um so now you've got a new catcher somebody yeah. you don't like you you've you were just in spring training and and you know they invite you know 12 catchers to camp or 10 catchers to camp and you've got guys catching you've never met you've got guys catching you that you you've not seen you're not for sure you know it's easy to throw to Riamuto for the most yeah. part because he's very reputable and I mean he's one of the best in the game so I like, oh, dude this yeah. guy's a stud. like I'm gonna go ahead and let him lead you know lead the way for me um but now you get young catchers that are 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 wanting to to come in and you hear that a lot it's like man all you got to do is you just got to be a catcher that gets in and has real good relationships with your pitchers you want to be the guy everybody wants to throw to Regardless if you're good or not, you want to yeah. be the guy everybody loves and everybody wants to throw to, and that's going to help keep you around the game for a while. What advice would you give to a young catcher that's coming into a brand new staff, a brand new team, never never caught this pitcher before? What kind of advice would you give him on how to approach that situation? Knowing everybody's different, so there's no right or yeah. wrong way to do that, but yeah, what yeah. would you have for a young catcher? Yeah, I think – all the catchers, especially they're new, them being new, I think, and them not knowing me, like I've had, I've had three or four different catchers just this past spring in the short spring that we had. Um, but I think the biggest question to ask is, ask each pitcher is, okay, what do you like to do with righties? What do you like to do with lefties? What's your out pitch? You know, do you only throw certain pitchers uh, to certain spots? Like for me, my slider, I really don't. Uh, I can do it, but I really don't throw sliders down and into the lefties. I know that's something that's a pitch that I may, may will do more of in the future, but I got a really good curveball and I just throw that a lot to lefties. So I really don't throw that slider down into the lefties. So for me, it's really an up and in type, a cutterish type of pitch, or it's down in the way to a lefty. I almost backdoor it. So there's some pitchers that, that do throw it down and into lefty. So it's basically just asking, asking questions to try to understand, you know, with two strikes, what do you like to throw? And that's, they ask me, what's your pitch? Is it slider? Is it fastball? Cause they really don't know. And I say, no, curveball. I say curveball, two strikes. That's my pitch. Um, you know, slider, slider to righties. I'm going down and away sliders to lefties. I'm going, uh, down and away also. And then up and in here and there. Um, and four seams are here, four seams are there. So it's just asking the questions um, about how their pitches are, what their go-to, and, and just how they like to go with the righty, lefty, uh, and things like that nature. So how That's about – yeah. So so you would rather be approached by catchers that haven't haven't caught you 
um, to more of a some research. Like, hey, if if I'm a catcher, I know that yeah. your best pitch is your breaking ball. I mean, you, yeah. you've shown us for for a long time that that's been your best pitch. So doing a little bit of research on the catchers in is like, yeah. all right, I'm awful. He's got a really good breaking ball, and when he's going really well, he's he's throwing it in at any time, at any count, in any yeah. spot, any location. Um, yeah. So doing a little bit of research helps, but what what is what are some what are some questions you well I mean we just went over questions but what what are some what are some things that that catcher can do to help you or or to to help kind of approach you with that are nonverbal that yeah. don't have anything to do with maybe, you know, speaking or asking, hey, you know, what's your, you know, what's your best pitch or how do you like to throw your change up? But what are some yeah. things that you can do that wouldn't be verbal? Yeah, so a lot of the things um, that happen are in-game. Like uh, Carlos Ruiz, he used to have some things. There's things that we didn't even talk about. Uh, and he's he caught a lot of games. And he was on the back of his career. He had, he'd caught a lot of – caught no hitters, all that stuff. But well, some of the things that he did um, – was research and I knowing where he's come from, where he's been, how he's done it. I was able to trust him on certain things. So there was, there was a pitch uh, to Michael Conforto. This was back in 16. Um, and we know that Conforto hits balls down and away. It's kind of an odd, he's a lefty hitter. So he hits, he hammers balls down and away. And it got to a point, it was a second AB and Carlos thro throws down a fastball down and away. And I'm like, like, no, Carlos, we talked about this before the game. Like, no, I'm, like, I'm up here with my ball in my hand. I'm like, no, no. And he kind of – he puts his hand down. He looks at me. He kind of cocks his head like – like, kind of gives me a nod. He gives me a down and away. And I said – and I knew what he meant. I knew that he – he didn't want it for a strike. He wanted it down and away off the plate. So, okay. I'm like, okay, I got you. I got you. So, I throw it. Sure enough, it's down and away off the plate. I see a Conforto kind of like – kind of like kind of not diving, but he kind of gives a, almost like a lunge. He's, down look, the he's looking out there. He's, he's looking, kind of looking out there. That's what he, going, that's what he yeah. So then sure enough, sure enough, next pitch, he goes, he calls a fastball up and in, and I already know it's coming or inside. I already know it's coming. Sure enough, I execute it. And he freaking pulls his, he, he's just late, gets on him. He breaks his bat to roll over. It's a four, three, uh, you know, that's four, three put out. Feeling. So it's just like, that is like stuff that was nonverbal. It was nonverbal, but in the game, I just knew. And it's like, and that's the trust that we built. It's a trust that I had in him, you know, but, um, and that's built. So it, that kind of goes against your question with being a new catcher, but. Um, no, but that's uh, great though, man. I mean, that's important. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just, you know, there's little things like if I'm cutting the ball or I'm cutting off or uh, flying open, you know, you can just give one of these, like come, you know, work through me working through me. It doesn't have to be anything. Just kind of do this to let me know, okay, I need to drive this ball through his glove, through his chest, through my target and, and go from there. So it's, there's little, just little things like that, you know, little things like that. He's telling, you know, if I'm, if I'm pulling open, he's, he's giving me that demonstration, like stay on it, stay through it, all that kind of stuff. There's, um, there's a lot of really good feelings out there. Like as catchers, being able to throw a guy out, like coming up and, and turning a ball around on a, back picking guys is an awesome feeling but oh yeah one of the one of the best feelings ever as a catcher that i personally ever had was when you set a dude up like you're talking about with comporto you set a dude up and then you get a pitcher that executes an inside pitch yeah. and blows his hands up and, <laughs> yeah. goes flying, and they're so pissed off they're so mad hands are bleeding they're yeah. they're just fire vibrating yeah. and it's Yep, we just got that guy, and and yep. we both did, and that and yeah, it takes, it, it, I mean, it takes both guys there. It takes the guy behind the dish being on the same page with the pitcher, knowing what right. pitches he's got that day, knowing how he's feeling, and like you said, he didn't even, you know, if Ruiz didn't even have to put the sign down. You already knew where you were going, yeah. and yeah. that feeling is, that feeling is just as cool, if not better, than throwing yeah. anybody out, man. Well, and that and kind of kind of what you're saying too is, you you said it's important to, you know, keep the game going, keep it tempo, and that's that's one of the huge things too is knowing what I want to throw. So like, there's nothing worse than getting on the mound, you're going, and then you get in like a roadblock, and you're you have to shake off like six times to try to get the pitch you want, and that just slows down the rhythm, slows down the the mojo, and like 
it just it changes things more than more than you know. So like the more that you're the catcher's on the same page, the more your pitchers on the same page, the the more the game flows. And traditionally, I'd say the more the more often you're going to be successful. Yeah, in the, in the yeah, you're in sync at that point. But yeah. I mean, you can you can attest to that, like. Catchers that I mean, when if pitchers are always shaking, those catchers don't last very. They either one they no. they want to adjust and change. You don't see those catchers very. If the pitchers are always doing that, you, I right. mean, see it very often. Right. That means they're and, and that means typically they're, they're probably not doing their homework or they're just not. They just don't. They're not understanding the game or just not you know in the game. You know that just there's something off with that. You know it's it's it's, it's one thing if it happens a game or two whatever, but if it's if it's pretty consistent, I mean that just there's some disconnect there and, and it's, it's a matter of figuring what, where that is, figuring out where that is. And that, that's, that, that is the relationship on field in game, in my opinion. And, and I'm, I'm, I would be unsure how it couldn't be because if the guy on the mound doesn't have, have confidence and comfort in throwing to the guy behind the plate, then you're, yeah. I mean, you're, You've got to have stupid, ridiculous, good stuff to just shake, 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 and then just throw what what you want to throw versus and, and not being on the same. You got to have Garrett Cole type stuff to do that. Really? Yeah, it's it's true. It's true. What um uh as as far as on the catching side, um you mentioned Ruby's favorite catcher. I mean, is was he your favorite catcher to throw to? you I mean, Ray Muto's been there. Yeah, I would say I would say as far as pitch calling and like just sequencing, he just I think I think Carlos was just you know he was three or four pitches ahead. Like he knew it, he knew he was gonna call to the on deck or you know to the on deck batter. You know what I mean? He just kind of knew, and um, that was that was pretty cool. But like JT, JT, you know he's he's just like backstop. He's just an ultimate backstop. He's keeping the ball in front. He's throwing guys out. Like that's just. Uh, and he's with you every pitch. He does his homework. Like he's like really like all all encompassing, hitting, catching, blocking, throwing, all that, running, all that stuff. Like he can, he just does it all. So I think that he he's he's pretty special. I'd say. How um how how handy are the catchers? So you know when as a pitch, you know every day you go out, you play catch, you warm up. And now flat ground. How important are flat grounds? Not not just necessarily to you, but how important are flat grounds? And and what are some things that we see catchers working with pitchers in the bullpen pregame, and then obviously during the game. But how are how are those relationships really built? You know, how how do you because it's I mean you got to see your catcher more than just yeah. for nine things when you know when you're out there pitching. How's you know how's that built? How do you build those? Yeah, so I think part of it is if that catcher isn't catching you, he's – and I saw JT doing this in some videos in spring training I saw this year. But he was – and it's partially helping him hitting. But he's he's sitting there standing in the box as if he's hitting and getting live reps. So he's actually seeing from the pitcher's point of view from – in the in the box and basically i think he's getting a read off that obviously he's hitting but he's also seeing how that pitch is breaking so that when he's catching him in a bullpen or wherever he's understanding how his stuff breaks how his stuff moves how much it moves so where where does he need to set up to keep it on the on the dish if he's got a big sweeping curveball he's going to need this he's going to need to sit like more on the dish he's going to need to sit more on the dish because that pitch is going to be or more off the dish or whatever based on how much it moves so he can position himself to make it look like a strike or try to give him a better shot to make it a strike. And then also where to call it. If, 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 it, if what he's feeling that day or whatever is, is going to be a good pitch. So it's, it's constantly, you know, whether he's standing in the box, just getting a bat acting like he's hitting or catching the flat grounds in between games, he's understanding how, how his 13 pitching staff or 13 pitcher staff, how all those guys pitches break because everybody's curveball breaks different. Not everybody throws a curveball like me. Not everybody throws a slider like me, um, or anything like that. So it just that that's one of the biggest things: understanding so that in the game he can know how know what to call based on how his stuff moves and how his stuff plays. That's a huge too. Okay, last catcher's question here, and I mean we could go over. I mean we we could go over this every single day 
probably yeah, until, a thousand times over. until our coronavirus is under control or <laughs> we're, we're, we're in, in different shape there. But um, you're not going very good that day. You don't have a, a very good bullpen, but you're staying optimistic. You take it out onto the mound. Um, this may lead into two questions, but you don't have your stuff that day. Yeah. What what does a good catcher do to help you? What what can a a catcher do to help you help yourself on the mound when you're when you're not going very good? You don't have a feel. You're yanking curveballs. You're 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 flying open on fastballs. We've talked about those small minor adjustments as far as I have. Yeah. Stay towards me. I mean, if if I do this to a pitcher, I'm telling him, hey, get good direction, get down the mound towards me. If I if I throw my hands up right here. I'm telling him, hey, just stay back a little bit. If I start to settle my yeah. hands, I'm trying to get him to settle his shoulders and cool off. So there's there's a lot of sign language that can go on in there. But, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so I think, for one, if I have a bad bullpen pregame, I don't think I've ever heard a catcher say, oh, that wasn't very good. I think, <laughs> you know, so and nor, nor, well, nor, do I want, nor do I want to hear that, I don't think. Um but I, I already know. I can already tell you if it was a bad bullpen or not. So just if you're a catcher, just tell them it was. Tell them your stuff's like moving really good today or whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, so just, yeah, perfect. Yeah, uh, you know, it's just your stuff's moving so much, you just having a hard time controlling it. It's fine. Um, but I mean, in the game, I think it's it's more so just uh, for me. It's almost just calming down, like not getting too ahead of yourself and. Um, and, I, and I think it happens for a lot of guys. Like, you know, you get guys on base and it starts getting wild. And, you know, you start – your mind just starts trailing off, kind of like we talked about in previous videos here. Um, just being able to calm down, understand what's going on. And so a lot of times it's just whoever the hitter's coming up. Say I just walked a guy. You know, I give up a, a double and then walked a guy. So he, JT's coming out or, or Austin Hedges is coming out to talk to me. A lot of times there will be – all right, here we go. He's like, we're fine here. Just stay stay within yourself. Here we go. And the guy's coming up. Who we got here? We got, you know, Manny Machado or Bryce Harper. Okay, here we go. We're just gonna, let's get a fastball, like a really good fastball down the way right here. Set up set up everything else. Get everything going for the rest of that bat. And uh, and that's kind of just you get you get your get your pitcher thinking of attack mode, how we're going to attack this guy versus, you know, maybe dwelling on something or you just get them thinking ahead, get them thinking ahead, get them thinking about the process and what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. Okay. So the, and this is a piggyback off of that. And this is one of the things that it was really important for me for the majority of the pitchers that, that, that I caught. Um, the really good ones used their, used their eight pitches, seven, eight pitches between innings. Mm -hmm. um, the really good ones use those pitches to their advantage. And, you know, wh what kind of importance, what kind of importance do you put on those pitches that you get between in each inning to, to start your inning? Yeah, that it's, it's a balance. It's, it's very similar to the bullpen. I'm trying to, and I used to be really particular. I get really like hung up on the fact that I just threw a very, maybe a subpar bullpen before a game or, really kind of subpar, really just bad pitches in between innings. I'm not trying to. I'm trying to execute. But understanding that that's not the game, that all I do, all that is doing is getting me warmed up. But at the same time, it's that, it's that little fine line of I'm putting that on the side. It's just getting me loose. But at the same time, I'm, I'm trying to execute. I'm, maybe last inning I was jumping a little bit. Right, I'm going to stay back a little bit. I'm going to stay through it. And I'm, I'm trying to feel – those little subtleties or those adjustments to maybe get me going for the game, but also not dwelling on it if I miss or mess it up. So it's like really, it's a really fine line, but I think ideally it's, it's, it's really just focusing. This is warming me up, but you you have some intent with it. I think that's, you have some intent. You're trying to locate, you're trying to hit spots, but you're also just warming up and just having that understanding that, that you can leave the bullpen, what happened to the bullpen there and leave it there and the game the game is the game because those bullpens i've thrown the worst bullpens ever and just dealt in the game and i've thrown my best bullpen ever and had my worst game so it's just you're you're warming up and you're trying to execute and just leave it at that we've um 
That's a good point. We had, I was in Rome, Georgia playing, best favorite place to play ever of all time, by the way. Um, that was, that was such a fun summer, but there was, um, we had a pitcher named Jeff Lyman, good dude. And, uh, he would come in and, and he was one of our starters, <laughs> one of our starters that year. And no joke, we're down in the bullpen and Doug Henry was our pitching coach that year. It was, um, he ended up getting a Doug pitch for like 10 years, the big leagues he ended up getting a world series, Kansas city Royals as the uh, bullpen. Oh, nice. coach. Um, nice. but Lyman would throw a Vulcan. He would split. He would throw the Vulcan. He would he would throw some of the best pitches you'd ever see a guy throw them, and he, he would throw the thing all over the place. Um, but I remember, man, one 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 game he was – we were throwing, and we were warming up, and we might have thrown seven pitches in the pen, and he skipped five of them. One hits the boards, and one was for a spot. <laughs> He takes the baseball and he flips it back behind him. He goes, Doug, let's go. It ain't getting any better. <laughs> <laughs> we marched it right out onto the field. I can't remember. I can't remember how well he did that day, but it was just the fact is like, hey, it ain't getting any better. Let's yep. go. There's no reason to waste time with it. So yeah. Jared, that I um anything else that you would that you would that you would tell or say or you know, any words for young catchers as far as hey guys. Yeah, you know, any, you know, any kind of help. I would, I would say just as, like you guys are working together, pitcher catchers working together, your relationship matters and you knowing the pitcher matters. And whether that's in a game or on the like the bullpen work or like practice or whatever, you know, if I'm pitching and I'm, I'm throwing a bullpen, there's nothing worse than a catcher. And I think we talked about this just like privately is, catching the ball you know I'm, I'm catcher set up down in the way and i throw a ball and i throw it here but the cow the catcher catches it he catches it and drags it and throws it back right away and i can't i can't as a pitcher see i can't i don't really know where that ended up i really don't know where that ended up and i don't i can't adjust to that okay well I'm, i get the ball back and i'm thinking okay well, was that a strike was that was that a really good pitch did i execute or did i yank that pitch? Did that cut so i'm, I'm thinking I can't make the necessary adjustment on the next pitch. So I would just say you're in it with your pitchers. You're in it whether you're practicing or in a game and just give every pitch a chance. You don't have to give it, you know, the world's best, uh, you know, stick or whatever, but just give it a chance, follow, follow the ball in, like whether I'm practicing or not. So my, I can get some good, really good work in. It just, like I said, it just, it just helps everything. And that's, those are the, my like two things. It's just like you're in it together. And, and when I'm just practicing, like I just, I got to see that ball where it ends up because that's going to help me, you know, here in three or four days when I'm starting. Yeah, right on, man. Well, Jared, I appreciate it, man. I, that's that's awesome. Is we got one question out of the way with our catchers, uh, with our <laughs> our catching chat, but um, eight the time, man, and uh, we'll be back soon. Yep, sounds good. Thanks, man. Yep, see ya.